Next topic is JAXB. Uh, JAXB is for data binding. So we have a two presentation. One is JAXB Basics, and uh, then next next presentation is JAXB 2.0. So we are going to learn what JAXB is and why you want to use JAXB, and uh, we are going to see how we can use JAXB and uh, we are going to actually see some architecture and binding process and uh, the runtime operations that you can perform. So what is and why JAXB? JAXB provides Java APIs and also tools and a framework uh, for automating the mapping between XML documents and Java objects. So in fact it provides a compiler that compiles XML schema to Java classes. So it's called the XTC and that's something that we are going to see in a few minutes. So what should the classes be? So obvious classes uh, that could be uh, transformed into XML and vice versa is int, string, date, and list and things like that. And classes can be generated, classes can be also generated from schema for other cases. So this is uh, basically Java technology level binding of the schema. So basically once you got the Java classes created or generated from schema, you can actually use that classes in other applications. Uh, now once you have a Java classes generated using XML schema, uh, then you can unmarshal the XML content to Java representation. Uh, what it means is that reading XML document instance uh, and into Java representation into Java object and uh, you can then access update and validate the Java representation against the schema constraints and then can you then you can actually write it back uh, into Java uh, content meaning you are going to actually uh, marshal the Java representation of the XML content into XML content meaning you can actually write it out, write it out into another Java uh, in the XML file. All right, so let's talk about why you want to use JAXB. So this is kind of important. Okay, um, it provides uh, it provides an efficient and standard way of mapping between XML and Java code. Okay, so let me actually say this point first, and then I'm going to go to the first bullet. You know. The, the parsing API that we have learned on day uh, two, uh, JAXP, SAX, and DOM, and Stacks, those are pretty low level uh, APIs. Okay, I think I mentioned that a couple of times. Uh, you can think of JAXP, SAX, and DOM, and Stacks as assembly language for XML document management, while JAXB is providing higher level language. Okay, in the same sense that like a Java provides high level language for writing applications, writing programs, while assembly language uh, is used for low level. In general, you want to use high level language like uh, Java, right? So for XML document management, you know, we'd like to take advantage of high level language like features of JAXB. Okay, so let me explain what I mean by that. So it provides efficient and standard way of mapping between XML and Java code. Okay. So now if you're using SAX and DOM or even Stacks, what you have to do is that you read XML document instance content. Okay, so you have XML document instance that contains some values. Then you have to create an object yourself and then you have to map the values from XML elements into your Java object properties and things like that. It was your responsibility, meaning you have to create the Java class yourself and then you have to actually map the values between XML document instance to your Java object. So pretty, uh, pretty, uh, you know, the uh, uh, low-level work you have to do. Okay. So what JAXB allows you to do is that you know you basically create the Java class and then you create an object and all you have to do is just reading XML document instance and boom you got the Java object that has everything. Okay. So that is basically why JAXB is providing higher level, high level language like feature for XML document management. So uh, unlike SAX and DOM on stacks, programmers don't programmers don't have to create application specific Java classes anymore themselves because it will be generated 
by XTC compiler. Uh, the uh, programmers do not have to deal with the XML structure, instead deal with the meaningful business data. So if you're using SACS and DOM or Stacks, you know, you still have to deal with pretty low level API such as a get attributes. Instead, what you want to do is uh, like uh, application level API such as a get person or get address or get purchase order kind of things. So by using JAXB, you can uh, you can actually uh, de deal with uh, you can actually deal with only with the high level uh, application level APIs. Okay, so these are basically kind of repeat of what I just talked about, but I think uh, it's not bad to re-emphasize these aspects one more time. So issues with DOM and SAX. You know, basically you have to walk the parse tree containing much more than just the application data. So in the case of DOM, you know, you have to actually deal with the parse, I mean the in-memory uh, tree structure like a get node name, get node type, get node value, which has absolutely nothing to do with the application. Okay. Uh, in, in terms of uh, comparison against the SACs, why do I have to write event handlers to map XML content to Java classes? You know, I mean that event hand those event handlers uh, again have nothing to do with the nothing to do with the application. Okay, so the value proposition of JAXB is that JAXB automates the XML to Java binding so that you can easily access your data using application level APIs. All right, so this is again comparison. So both the JAXB and DOM creates in-memory content tree, but in JAXB, however, content tree is specific to app. Yeah, so when you create DOM, okay, DOM is pretty generic uh, tree structure, but uh, JAXB internally creates in-memory tree structure it, it, it itself. But that content tree is specific to specific source schema because you are going to create uh, Java classes from XML schema and it doesn't contain extra tree manipulation functionality okay? and it allows access to its data with a derived classes access and method like a get person rather than get node or something like that so you can think of JXP as the data driven like application data driven as opposed to XML document driven which is actually based on pretty low level API and then content tree uses the memory efficiently because it does not have to it does not have to be generic uh, tree structure it can be optimized for that particular source schema so JAXB design goals is easy easy to use so the key point I think I should actually emphasize one more time is that in JAXB basically you are going to create Java classes from your XMR schema so you got to have XMR schema okay so design goals of JAXB is easy to use, so it lowers the barrier to entry to manipulating XML documents within Java programs. So by using SACS and DOM and Stacks, you know, you are forced to use very low level APIs, which are not really pleasant to use. Okay? Uh, by using JAXB generated application level classes, you don't have to deal with those low level APIs anymore. And, uh, and you don't have to deal with the complexity of parsers either. You basically deal with the Java classes. And you're going to create an object from it and then you know you can read the XML document instance into that object. So it's very very uh, the, uh, uh, easy to use. Uh, it is also customizable so uh, if you want to do some customization in terms of the name of the class, uh, name of the package from a schema then you can actually provide some custom, uh, custom information. Uh, so the portability, so JAXB components can be replaced without having to make significant changes to the rest of the uh, source code. So JAXB, gener I mean JAXB generated uh, class files are just the Java class files, okay? And uh, you know you typically create those uh, classes on the single package. And if you have to regenerate because the schema changes, then it's going to be just the uh, you know package different pack it could be different package or same package with the different classes you know it's up to you uh, validation on demand so it could validate the tree against the constraint of the source schema okay because when you create a Java classes from XML schema uh, the classes should actually contain the validation logic uh, for example if you have XML schema that uh, specifies the name of uh, the length of the name has to be uh, between 5 to 10 characters and then your Java generated, I mean the uh, the uh, JAXB generated Java code should have some validation uh, based on that constraint. 
uh, clean round tripping. So converting to Java content tree XML and vice versa should be an uh, easy thing to do. Okay. All right. So I kind of give you a sense of what the JAXB is all about. Okay. So basically, I'm going to just summarize the key point. Uh, JAXB provides uh, what is called the schema to Java compiler, and uh, it's called the XTC. And uh, let me just to show you this XTC command. It comes with the JDK, so you can say XTC. Okay. Oops. Uh, let's see. Let me go to Java. Home. Go to bin. Oh, I'm sorry. XJC. X, XJC. So this is the uh, uh, this is the uh, uh, schema to Java compiler. XML schema to Java compiler. So that's what XJC means. XML schema to Java compiler. So you give a schema to this XTC command, then it will generate the Java classes for you. Okay. So it again plays the role of high-level language for XML manipulation. Uh, the uh, compared to SACS and DOM and STACS, which are like assembly language for XML manipulation. So typically, you want to use take advantage of JAXB as much as possible. All right, so let's see how we can use JAXB. So steps for building and using JAXB applications. So you know we are dealing with the compile time as well as runtime. So runtime, you can actually use some of the runtime operations at compile time. First, you are going to create XML schema. So you can develop XML schema, or somebody might have already developed XML schema for the data types. Okay, so you have to have XML schema. Okay, uh, you can annotate the schema uh, as you know, as an option. You can annotate the schema for customization. Okay, but if you don't if you don't annotate it with your customization, then it will just use the default. Okay, and then you are going to generate Java source files from this XML schema. By using that XJC uh, compiler, okay, and then you are going to develop JAXB uh, application. Uh, so basically, you are going to use uh, the uh, JAXB classes that are generated in in step two, okay, and uh, and then you can just compile the Java code. And uh, then with the classes uh, the, that were generated, you can just write the Java application. So you can build object tree representing XML data that is valid against the XML schema, uh, the uh, or marshaling or either marsh unmarshaling the data into the XML document. So basically, you know, once you got the uh, classes that are generated from XJC compiler, you can create an object from it, and then you can actually uh, the uh, the uh, read XML document instance into that object. Okay, uh, or you can just uh, create uh, the object it, and then you can just fill the uh, object properties. And in that case, you don't have to read XML document instance. You are basically creating uh, the uh, the XML uh, the XML instance in a form of Java object. And then you can access and modify the data, meaning you know the uh, you can access and modify the uh, properties of that object, and uh, you can uh, validate modifications to the data relative to the relative to the constraints expressed in XML schema. So when you are when you're setting the property of age, for example, and if the XML schema says the age has to be between five and eighty, right? And now, when you try to change that property of age, uh, and if you set the value beyond that eight, beyond that range, beyond the uh, valid range of eight, five, and eighty, then it could actually give you an exception. Okay. And then you can also marshal in-memory data, so that object could be written into another XML document and insta document instance. Okay, so JAXB architecture. So let me actually stop right here and see whether there are any questions. So far, I've been actually just talking about the concept. Okay, so you guys probably get confused a little bit. So let me just pause. Uh, let's talk about JAXB architecture. <coughs> <coughs> so this picture shows how JAXB works. So you are going to Use JAXB binding compiler. So this is the XJC compiler that I talked about. Uh, you know this XJC thing. Okay. So uh, you are going to use this JAXB compiler uh, XJC, 
and uh, it will be the XML schema okay and you can actually provide the binding uh, the customization file but in general you know we're gonna just use a default so typically XJC will be just XML schema then it will generate Java code okay so you know basically you can think of all this uh, the uh, uh, Java code that got generated from XML schema so obviously obviously XML schema has some you know the complex type and things like that those complex type will be generated as a Java classes okay and once you got the class you can read XML document an instance and uh, you know feed it into job you know, feed into an object okay and uh, then you got an object you can manipulate okay uh, and then object uh, that object could be marshaled into XML document a document so you can on um, marshal meaning you are reading XML document instance into Java object a marshalling means you are going to uh, write it out to another XML document instance like XML file okay so just uh, repeat of what I just talked about in previous slide uh, so XML data binding facility so binding compiler so that is XJC compiler that I showed you that comes with the JDK so it binds schema components to derive Java classes means it generate uh, Java classes and interfaces and uh, then yeah so binding compiler will actually read XML schema then it will generate interfaces and classes uh, and uh, the, so uh, the content tree is a tree in in-memory instances so now once you create an object from that class you know it's basically in-memory instance representing that uh, the uh, that uh, it, it, it representing an object uh, that uh, you know that actually maps to XML schema type okay and the methods provide access to the content of the corresponding schema component and we are going to see these methods in a few minutes and uh, binding runtime API so provides runtime XML enabling operation yeah, so this is the runtime APIs that you can use on Marshall meaning uh, reading XML document instance into your Java object uh, and uh, marshalling means writing the contents of your Java object into XML document instance and then you can also validate the content uh, based on schema constraint okay and uh, its implementation is actually under this package javafx javax.xml bind package so these are runtime APIs which I described and uh, let's actually talk about this one one more time so here on Marshall means you know suppose if you have an object okay that represent in-memory structure of your schema type okay uh, you can read the XML document into that object okay uh, and validate is to validate a content tree based on constraints expressed within the original schema and marshal means uh, you are going to write out it, the content tree object into XML document yeah some of you who are brand new to JAXB might be a little bit confused uh, because I haven't really shown you any uh, you know the code okay so don't worry about it we are going to play around with this code so you will have much better understanding later on all right, so let me just stop right there again uh, and see whether. Okay, so JXB binding process. So as I said before, uh, there are design time things and runtime things. So design time, you are going to generate uh, classes, Java classes from schema, and then you are going to compile it, and then you are going to use those classes, okay, um, in your application. Uh, the runtime again you can unmarshal XML uh, content tree meaning you are going to be able to read XML document instance into your object you can process you know so when, once you got the Java object it's just like a genuine Java object so you can access and modify and you can validate uh, that XML object so by the way when I when, when I say content tree I'm talking about in-memory image meaning that Java object representing that uh, uh, the uh, the XML data and then you can marshal the content tree meaning you are writing that in-memory image uh, the uh, object job object into uh, XML file so this picture actually shows what we've been talking about okay so from the schema you are going to generate uh, classes 
okay so classes and interfaces okay and uh, yeah so you can actually compare the schema and derived classes and as XML document uh, the uh, the uh, yeah, actually yeah I should actually mention these are compatible with this so from the schema you get derived classes and then you're gonna create object instances from those uh, derived classes and these object instances should actually reflect a uh, particular document instance right so from the schema you could have a uh, multiple uh, many XML document instances right okay uh, so you know you can actually on Marshall meaning you are going to read XML document instance into Java object and uh, or later on you can marshal it meaning from this object you're going to create a XML you're going to be able to create XML document instance okay so this kind of give you uh, the picture, big picture in terms of how schema and the XML document instances relationship is compatible to derived classes and objects of those derived classes relationship. Okay, and the objects could be validated uh, because uh, the objects, I mean, these classes should have a validation logic based on schema validation. okay so design time binding process so we are a little bit of repeating uh, the same concept over and over and I think that's not bad because uh, it kind of emphasizes you know key points so again design time you are going to use this binding compiler called the XJC and uh, you read XML schema and uh, this is the uh, binding schema this is actually customization file and then you are going to create uh, the uh, classes okay so this is how things map. So your XML uh, namespace. So you know in your X, in your schema you have a namespace, right? The namespace is going to be used as a package name, as a default. Okay, you can you can customize it, but as a default, uh, XML namespace is going to be used as a package. And uh, the element and complex type will be uh, in a class. It will generate a class and uh, any attribute or leave uh, the uh, the element they will be a property of the class okay that makes sense right okay okay so default rule versus the uh, custom uh, binding declaration so again you know this could be uh, the default rules uh, are specified in the JAXB specification and uh, the binding compiler uses these default rules uh, when it's generating uh, Java classes. Again, these default rules are sufficient in uh, most the cases. However, if you do not, uh, but however, if you do not like a default uh, the uh, uh, rules, then you can provide custom rules, and it's called the custom binding declaration. Again, you can provide this custom binding declaration in two different forms. Uh, it could be in a separate uh, custom binding declaration file. So this is another XML file. Or it could be inlined in XML schema document. You can specify, you know, what you want in XML schema document. Okay, so derived classes are genuine Java class. So it should actually follow, you know, Java API guidelines, okay, naming conventions and all that stuff. So it is genuine Java class, okay, and it conceptually match schema structurally and uh, also preserve validation constraints. So if age field supposed to be in the the value of the age field is supposed to be between 5 and 80 uh, the generated Java class should have that validation logic built in okay and uh, it should structurally map the uh, schema so if you are creating a purchase order class from purchase order XML schema type and uh, you know the properties of that purchase order Java class uh, should be reflecting uh, the elements of the purchase order XML schema type Okay, that makes sense, right? Uh, it hides plum it hides a plumbing as much as possible. So you know you don't have to deal with stacks and DOM and stacks yourself to create a Java class and then create an object from it and all that stuff, right? So those things are all done by JAXB. Okay, so that's the reason we say JAXB is high level API for XML uh, manipulation. Okay, so default binding. So you know, uh, default a simple type definition and default data type binding and default binding rule summaries. So we're gonna actually go over a few uh, binding defaults. Okay, 
Uh, so simple uh, simple type definitions typically bind to Java property. So those simple type like a date uh, or string or int uh, that are corresponding Java you know type, right? Okay. Uh, Java property attributes a base type. Uh, it could be base type or collection type. Yeah. So this is a default data type binding. So if you have used the string, access the string in your XML schema, it will use string data type and integer it will use a big integer and for int it will use int for long it will use long and you can see you can see uh, it does have uh, relatively you know the one-to-one -one correspondence even though they are not always one-to-one -one correspondence okay and uh, this is for qualified name and uh, then it's going to use a namespace that qualified name okay so qualified name again is a combination of prefix and uh, the uh, element one attribute Okay, so date time is uh, mapping to calendar. Uh, date is setting to date. Okay, and uh, any simple type is going to be just a string. Okay, so those are default uh, the uh, binding. Uh, so you know basically these are the examples. Uh, so from a global element declaration to element interface. So if you have a global element, then uh, the uh, the uh, it will actually have element interface. Local element, same thing, and the uh, attribute is going to be property. And uh, so, you know, this one doesn't get translated. Element in this case, this is the uh, name of the element, and the type is purchase order type, right? So it will actually create a purchase order that Java file, okay, which is reflecting purchase order type, okay? So it will have all the properties reflecting sub elements of purchase order. Comment is going to be comment. That Java. Okay, so the purchase order that Java file is gonna look like this. Okay, so in fact the uh, yeah, so it, it yeah it actually create an interface which extends uh, the uh, element, uh, JXB element, and also purchase order type. Okay, so purchase order type uh, is going to be you know reflecting uh, the uh, this guy purchase order type. Okay. So these are all done for you, uh, so you don't really have to worry about it. Okay, so we're gonna actually play around with this in the hands-on lab. Okay, uh, the name complex type. So the XML namespace is going to be creating a Java package. Name complex type is going to be Java content interface, and yeah, Java inter yeah, it will actually generate the Java interface. And uh, then enum simple type definition with the base and the name, it will generate the enum class and things like that. Yeah, as long as you have actually understanding that there is actually default rules in terms of how to convert from XM, XML schema to Java classes, that is good enough. Uh, so this is the uh, uh, purchase order type, and uh, then it will generate the uh, purchase order type the Java file. As you can see, it does have sub elements in sequence, uh, like a ship to, build to, comment items, and uh, then it also has an order type, right? So all this ship to build to comment and items uh, the uh, and order type they will be the properties of purchase order type, okay? And uh, items might be actually a collection, okay? So let's take a look at this. Yeah, so this is a purchase order type, and uh, we have uh, the uh, uh, the um, oh so this is uh, this is uh, interface, okay? So we have uh, items. Uh, the uh, get and set a method for those properties and then in the implementation we should have uh, those properties defined. Uh, this is US address okay so again we are going to have US address and uh, then US address is going to be interface with a get and set a method for those properties and then we should have uh, US address uh, implementation class with the properties. Uh, let's see, so derived interfaces. So each complex type definition named complex type map to a derived interface and implementation class, okay, as a default. Okay, so enable user implementation of derived interface via binding schema. And type definition derivation hierarchy to map to Java. And, yeah, so type definition div 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 derivation uh, uh, hierarchy map to Java in inheritance uh, class hierarchy. That makes sense, right? Uh, derived classes. So basically, it's going to create properties. Okay. So uh, three core property type. A simple is going to be bean, 
index is going to be bean as well collection is going to be java util list type uh, so yeah so suppose if you have a complex type of the trade and it does have uh, the uh, sequence of symbol and uh, it has the uh, uh, you know quantity and attribute uh, basically it will create an interface with the get and set a method for these two okay and there will be uh, implementation class uh, property basics. Uh, so basically, we have a getter and setter method. That's basically uh, it. Yeah, I'm actually moving forward a bit. Yeah, this is a bit too tedious content. All right, so this is better. Now, so you know that mapping is used at compile time to generate derived classes from XML schema. Now, once those classes are being used and used during runtime. Uh, the runtime operations could be performed. Again, these are on marshalling, and then you can access and modify an object. You can marshal it, and you can do validation. Now, in order to do these things, you know you have to actually uh, the uh, 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 create the on marshaller, and marshaller, and validator object instances from uh, the context object. Okay, so we're going to see that code in a few seconds. Uh, so runtime framework. So here, basically, in the application code, you can actually use uh, those methods. Yeah. So you know you can basically perform these four things. That's basically what we are trying to say here. All right. So let's move on to the first uh, runtime operation you can do. So that's on marshalling. So on marshalling is once you got an object instance created from the Java class uh, that was uh, created from the uh, XJC compiler, uh, JXB binding compiler, then you can read the XML document instance. Okay. Uh, so uh, basically, what it does is that it will generate the content tree, meaning object instance representing the content tree of that XML document instance. Okay. Uh, by the way, the uh, the the source of unmarshalling, meaning you know the uh, the XML document instance could be from files, or it could be input stream object, or it could be DOM node, or it could be sex node. So this is an example. So suppose uh, so you know the uh, the JXB context object. So JXB context object is the one that you have to have in order to create a marshaller, unmarshaller, and validator. Okay. So you know, basically, JXB context object is the entry point for creating these object. Okay. So the first you have to do is to create the JXB context object. So once you got the JXB context object, you can now create on marshal object. So this on marshal is a Java interface, and this on marshal is used for on marshal object is going to be used to on marshal XML document instance into object instance. Okay. Uh, when you actually are marshalling, you can it can optionally validate XML data whether it is on when as it is on marshalled. So you know you have you have XML document instance, and when you read it, you know you want to actually check whether that XML document instance in fact is valid or not, right? So that could be done uh, when you perform on marshalling. So this is on marshalling XML document instance file into uh, in memory Java object, okay? So we have to first create JXB context object, then we have to create the on marshal object from it, okay? And then what we are going to do is we are going to call on marshaller, and then we provide uh, the uh, XML file, and then we are going to uh, the uh, you know we are basically uh, 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 the feed the contents of this XML file into into the object. And so this object represent in memory image of the uh, the uh, XML type. Uh, this uh, this is on marshalling from input stream. So instead of getting a file from new file object, you can actually get the uh, file input stream and you get the XML file, and then you're actually reading uh, the uh, input stream object. Okay, so uh, you can read from input stream. You can read it from URL as well. So this is XML file, document instance that you are going to read, and then you can unmarshal using uh, URL. So that's fine. And uh, you can uh, you can actually access from document object. So this is a DOM node. 
Okay, remember yesterday that we, you know, this is the DOM uh, API. So you create a document build object, and then you get the uh, document build. Uh, you can uh, first you you get document build a factory object. From the factory object, you get the document builder. So this is the uh, uh, DOM parser, and then when it parses the XML file, it gets the document object. So you can feed document object as an argument to on Marshall. Uh, this is a sex source, so you can actually, you know, feed sex source uh, as uh, input of the XML document instance. Okay, so validation during unmarshalling. So you know, you can actually check whether a document instance that is being fed into the object is in fact valid or not. Okay. Uh, so in general, uh, you are going to actually perform all this validation check during development time in production environment. You are going to turn it off. Okay. Uh, so flexibility to enable or disable validation, because uh, it might be a waste of time to validate valid documents during production time. Uh, uh, no longer required to terminate until encountering first validation failure. So you know when the validation is failure, you can actually move on to finish finish the uh, uh, reading the XML document. Okay. Uh, increased flexibility comes at the cost, less deterministic. Yeah, so don't worry about this part. Yeah, I should actually move this guy. Yeah, that was just explaining uh, the difference between JXP uh, versions. Uh, okay, so this is for turning off validation during on marshalling. So we get our marshaller, and then if you call set validating false, then uh, when you actually read XML document instance, uh, the uh, the validation will not be performed. Okay, so that is actually for reading XML document instance into in-memory uh, object. Okay, now you can create in-memory content programmatically. So if you don't have any any XML document instance to read from, okay, then you can actually create your own in-memory. So this is in fact another way of creating a content tree. So content tree typically is created uh, by reading XML document instance, uh, the uh, but you know you can uh, create from scratch. So in this case, you don't need XML document instance, and uh, application needs to have uh, access and knowledge about each of the schema derived object. Yeah, and yeah, so basically, an you know, application is going to provide uh, the data to that in-memory ob object. So that's pretty much. So this is an example code of programmatic generation of content trees. So we get this. Uh, this is this is basically uh, purchase order uh, class. Okay. Uh, so from the purchase order class, uh, you know you could actually unmarshal on this object if you have XML document instance. But here uh, we're going to just create uh, you know purchase order object. We're going to just set the properties ourselves. So you're going to set the uh, order date, and uh, you know we might actually. Um, Set other properties, okay, and that becomes in-memory image, uh, and then we can actually write it out uh, to XML file later on. Okay, processing and accessing modification. So here, you know, once you got the in-memory object, that's a genuine Java object. So you can do anything you want. So you can access it, and you can modify it. Okay. So this is the case again. You know, we have a purchase order object. Uh, the uh, and we unmarshaled. Uh, Purchase order that XML file. Okay, so at this point, this purchase order object is reflecting the contents from this PO that XML file. Okay, now we can actually access it, and we can change it. You know, we access the uh, the build to field, which is a US address uh, type, and then we can actually change uh, the uh, property values of that US address. Okay, so this is an example of access and modify that in-memory object. So again. I want you to think about uh, the difference between JXB versus uh, low-level uh, XML manipulation technologies such as SAX and DOM and Stacks. Okay, so here we are, you are actually dealing with all object-level API. You know, there is no API for, let's say, get node or get child node. You know, or in the case of SAX, you know, writing uh, having some kind of uh, the uh, event handler to read the next element. And uh, whether that is actually start element or an ending element, you know, none of those uh, the uh, complexity is uh, visible here because we all deal with up the uh, application level classes. So this is, in fact, much much easier, much much more easier way of actually dealing with XML. 
So that's the reason you can think of JEXB as high-level language for XML manipulation, while SEX and DOM and STACS are low-level language, such as uh, low-level language like assembly language for manipulating XML. Okay, marshalling. Marshalling is writing things out to another XML document. So suppose if you constructed uh, in-memory image, okay, and you changed it, and then you can actually write it out to another XML document instance, and that's called the marshalling. All right, let me see if there are any questions. Okay, so um, I felt like I just took too much with that. Um, so this is marshalling. So marshalling is writing in-memory image object into uh, uh, external XML output document. Okay, so uh, so that's basically marshalling is all about. All about content tree will be marshaled by passing it to marshal method of marshal object. Okay. All right, so. In order to get the Marshall object, you have to get the context object, uh, you know, JXB context object. JXB context object uh, is created uh, from new instance method. Okay, so you got the unmarshal object, and uh, then we got, then we actually unmarshal it first, okay, and then we got the marshaller, and then we're going to actually write it out to another file, okay, and uh, then we call the marshal. So in this code, you know, we unmarshal. Uh, full.xml file and then we actually write the contents of it to another XML file called the uh, no sfeal2.xml file. Uh, basically we are just marshalling it. Okay, So this is the object uh, the uh, representing the in-memory image of who object and this is output stream. So we are actually writing out, out to uh, another external file. Uh, you can marshal to sex content, so you know the, this object is going to be is going to be used to create new sex content. So it is going to create the my content handle object. Uh, you can create into DOM object, or you can just write out to upper stream. All right. So what we have covered uh, is. Um, uh, on Marshall and uh, Marshall. Now let's talk about validation. So validation provides seamless access to XML validation in the Java programming environment. So XML schema basically defines the structure and uh, and the validation logic, right? Uh, so that structure and validation logic should be captured in the generated Java classes. Okay. So the idea of this uh, this uh, validation goals is make convenient to use the Java environment, uh, making a validation to be easily used in Java environment, and process any many errors as possible in one validation st step. Okay, so let's see how we do this. Uh, so type constraint impose requirements upon values. Uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna just skip this slide. Uh, yeah, so this is um, important. Uh, relevant three forms of validation so fast and fail validation so simple runtime check constraint check that can be performed by property setter method so you know when you are trying to set a property of your in-memory image object and uh, it could be checking whether the value is in fact the uh, in the right range for example okay on-demand validation so uh, you can call a validate method or validator object to perform validation at the moment or validation could be done at on marshalling. So there are three different ways that validation could be performed. When the XML document is being read, that's actually on marshalling time. On demand is basically you're going to call the validate method of the validator uh, object. Uh, or when the setter method is invoked, the validation could be done as well. All right, so this is the validator. Uh, this is interface and control the validation of content tree during runtime, responsible for on demand validation as well. So this is the code. So here again, uh, in order to get the validate object, you have to have JXB context object, okay? And then you can. So here, this is the uh, you know the validate method. You can actually call validate method passing the your in memory object, okay? So if there is a validation error, then it will let you know. Uh, this is a case that we are marshalling. Uh, yeah. So we, you know this is uh, the marshalling it out, okay? So you know there is no validation here. When you on when when you on marshal, that that might actually uh, the uh, cause uh, that that'll, that'll actually perform that could actually also perform validation. Okay, 
uh, if you set the validation on. Okay, so that is the end of the presentation. So that is rather long presentation. Okay, so let's take a look at the uh, validation hands-on. Uh, I'm sorry, the uh, JXB basics hands-on lab. Okay, okay. So let's again. Let me, okay, so let me start from the beginning. Okay, so the first exercise is modify and marshal. So in this case, you know what we are going to do is uh, we are going to uh, create a Java classes uh, by using XJC. It should be XJC, and uh, it's going to create Java classes on the primer.po that package. Okay, and then what we are going to do is we are going to modify and marshal. So modify is basically you're going to change in memory image. Uh, object and then Marshall is we are creating external file from it. Okay, so we are gonna actually go to so let's actually do this. Uh, uh, I'm going to open uh, the uh, so I'm going to go my labs and I have uh, the JXB basics. Okay, so this is the lab and you go to um, you're going to actually go to uh, sample netbeans and then JXB modify marshall so because we have to create the uh, java classes okay? so samples netbeans and uh, we are going to go to JXB okay? and that is uh, modify marshall okay now you see there is um, uh, the, uh, the schema, okay? Po dot xst. So if you take a if you take a look at the contents, po dot xst. This is a schema in which it defines uh, the uh, it defines um, purchase purchase order type, which contains. Uh, the US address and uh, and uh, you know the order data attributes so this is the XML schema that we have seen before and this is US address and this is the items okay and this is the uh, simple type SKU and then we have a global elements of purchase order and comment okay okay so now what we are going to do is we are going to generate uh, Java classes okay so the way we are going to generate Java classes using XJC and then you provide XML schema file and then you provide the package so in this case we are going to provide primer.po as package name and then SRC is the destination directory where you want to create the Java code okay so let's try XA, XJC XJC and uh, it's a PO what is that PO I'm gonna just type this copy this guy. Okay, so I'm reading PO.xml uh, schema file and this is the package and this is the destination. So you should actually create the SRC file. Okay. Alright, so it creates uh, on the SRC, so if I go to SRC you can tell that it got generated right now uh, with the uh, December 10th, okay, with a primer uh, and uh, primer that 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 PO that's the package, right? Oops, primer PO. Uh. Uh. Okay, I have to go to SRC first. SRC and primer and uh, that PO. And this is the uh, Java classes that are created from the XML schema. Okay. Now we are going to run. Uh, now we are going to modify the open modify Marshall's NetBeans project. Okay. All right. So this is already created for you. So you can just copy. You know, you, you know it's already there. Okay. Uh, the uh, so let's run modify Marshall.
so you know the uh, this is already provided for you but uh, you know you can actually copy the package into here so you can just delete this guy and then you can copy the ones that you have created yourself okay but since this is already provided we'll just use it okay and uh, in this case if you take a look at the uh, Java code uh, uh, here uh, I'm gonna actually use the uh, lab documentation so when you run the code let's actually run this guy first okay let's run it and it will just generate the uh, XML document instance and just print out uh, in the uh, standard output device so that's what you see now let's take a look at the code so this is the uh, main code so, so here we create the JXB context object and uh, then we are going to unmarshal so we're going to actually read uh, PO.XML file so you know, if you take a look at the PO.XML file that we have yeah so this is type PO.XML file so what we do is that once you got the uh, purchase order Java object okay uh, we are going to, you know, so we actually, uh, the, uh, what we do is, uh, yeah, so basically what we did was uh, we just unmarshal uh, the uh, PO.XML PO file from here, and then we got the, uh, you know, basically JXB element object, okay, and uh, then we can actually access uh, you know those properties of that in-memory image and then we just marshal it out into output device okay so you know try to change these values and see whether it's actually being reflected uh, well actually since you're actually changing it you know it's going to you can just take a look at the contents of it once you actually uh, unmarshal it. it should actually reflect uh, this guy right you can make a breakpoint and see whether it actually reflect the contents okay so that is the unmarshal and uh, modify so basically in this case we unmarshal it modified and then we marshal it so we did three things and um, so this is actually we talked about uh, this is uh, exercise two is on marshal and validate so in in this case uh, the uh, we are actually checking whether the things are you know the uh, uh, things are actually as expected okay uh, so you know you can see uh, the uh, w there is actually a problem a product name is expected but it's not okay but it will just continue to you know the uh, uh, unmarshal it okay so this is basically doing uh, the uh, uh, the validation at time of unmarshaling when the XML document is being read okay so this is the code so here uh, again we actually have unmarshaler and uh, then we actually have a event handler uh, the uh, to you know to get notified when there is a validation error so that's basically what we actually being displayed right here okay and a new file and on marshal okay uh, let's see that is uh, yeah so the, you know, it does have a primer.po file uh, the same package that we created okay so that is uh, validation, uh, the unmarshal time validation. Uh, exercise three is uh, data type converter. So this is basically how to modify Java content tree and marshal it back into XML data. Okay. Uh, so yeah. So this is an example where customization within the schema file. So uh, you know when we actually use uh, xdpo.primo.po file, uh, the you know the if you take a look at the XML schema uh, you actually see some of the uh, annotations so these are customization okay uh, that you have in your XML schema itself so this is JXB, JXB uh, uh, and for example in this case uh, instead of uh, the US address uh, is is actually using uh, different uh, uh, oh this is ju just a Java documentation and this is property so yeah so in this example is basically using different uh, name of the uh, class and things like that okay so as long as you know that this is actually oh so, yeah okay so this is actually generating Java class with the two name instead of uh, instead of uh, sequence 
Yeah, so I think it's actually changing. I, yeah, it's actually instead of the tw instead of another name, it's actually using two name. I have to actually check what is the uh, uh, this particular case is supposed to be. Uh, this is street city. Uh, maybe this is a country or something like that. But they actually use the different uh, string like this for customization. And uh, so that is the uh, third exercise. Just kind of give you a, giving you an example where you can do some customization. Okay. Uh, as long as you guys have some understanding of XJC, how XJC is being used, uh, you know that's probably uh, the key point. Uh, in general, you know the um, uh, the runtime APIs are not that much being used uh, unless you actually do uh, uh, in most of the uh, web service applications. Uh, you know the uh, uh, the uh, XJC is used to create a Java classes, and those are the uh, the classes that will be actually used in your uh, application. Uh, and uh, runtime APIs are, you know, I think sometimes if you actually to manipulate XML file, that's the time that you can actually use. Uh, so again, hopefully you got you guys get the sense of the difference between JXB as uh, uh, you know the XML document manipulation technology versus Stacks and DOM and Stacks that are very low level that provide very low level XML manipulation uh, facilities. Okay, all right. So I'm going to stop the recording.